Hello and welcome to another webisode of Android Dev 101. Yes, in today's episode we're going to take another look at using web views in your Android application. The goal for this tutorial is to create a simple application which will allow us to display to a user the statistics for a specified YouTube channel. Now you see in the layout for this application we have an edit text allowing the user to enter the name of the YouTube channel, a search button to start the search, and a text view to display the results. When we look at the XML, we see there's also a web view, which we didn't see in our graphical interface because the visibility was set to invisible. The purpose of this web view is twofold. It's going to perform the queries for us and return the data on the YouTube statistics, and it will also be utilized to give the user a notification that we are performing a query and the data is being loaded. So let's take a look at our main activity for this application. In the onCreate, we're going to grab some of the assets like our edit text, our text view, and our button from the layout. We'll take a look at that in a second, but first let's look at how we initialize our web view. As in the previous webisode, webisode, we load the URL from a local asset, our index.html, which is stored in our assets www folder. We then get the settings for our web view and turn the JavaScript on. We're also, in this tutorial, going to set a default web Chrome client. This allows us to see console log outputs in our logcat, which is very useful for debugging. We then add a JavaScript interface, the YouTube callback class. This is going to allow us a connection from our JavaScript to our Java. And let's take a look at it now. In our YouTube callback class, we have two methods, on success and on failure, which are both JavaScript interfaces. And our on success will call from our JavaScript to our Java, sending it the title, number of subscriptions, and total number of views for a YouTube channel, which will then display in our result text view using a little HTML formatting to create bold for certain aspects and other tags you can also insert here. We'll then set the visibility for our web view to invisible again because we've finished loading. Similarly, in our on failure, we'll display the error message in our result text view and we'll set the visibility for our web view to invisible. Now let's take a look at the last thing we do to our web view which is set the web view client. This will let us know when the page is finished loading and we can set our variable web ready which is a boolean to true letting us know that our web view is ready and we can start making our requests. Now going back to the search button you see when we set our on click listen listener we're gonna check that variable web ready to make sure we can start making requests. If it is ready we'll call load URL again but pay attention that the prefix in this load URL is JavaScript colon. That allows us to call a specific function in our index.html, in this case, get data. And then once we've called that load URL, we're going to set the visibility of our web view to visible, which will display to our user that we're loading. Now let's take a look at the index.html. As you see, it has one single function, get data, which is going to perform our request. Now we're going to be using a class called XML HTTP uh, request, which allows us to perform a request to the YouTube version 2 API. After we perform our request in the send, we'll receive a response synchronously, and that will be stored in our request response text. Then we can parse out the response, and finally we call our YouTube callback class, which is initialized back in our onCreate when we added the JavaScript interface. And we send back the title, the number of subscribers, and the view count. Similarly, if something went wrong, we'll call our YouTube class with on failure and send back a failure reason. Now, this JavaScript might be a bit daunting to those of you out there that are normally using Java for your coding in Android. But one of the things that's very advantageous about using the JavaScript here is that we can actually run it and debug it in Chrome. So let's take a look at that real quick. Now we've loaded the index.html from our project in Chrome. As you see, it has the loading text. And now let's simulate calling the get data function, which we would normally do from our Java. So if we type in the Chrome console. For those of you who don't know, this inspector can easily be opened if you right click on your index on your HTML and then inspect element. And then once it's open, go to your sources file and we can see all the JavaScript and debug it from here. So let's get back to console. We're going to call our get data. 
with the Android Dev 101 channel as a request. And when we hit enter, we see it stopped in our breakpoint. This is Kit Data. We see our search request is Android Dev 101. Let's let it run. We're setting max results to 50, but we're only going to take the first one anyways. And this is just to add some versatility to your code if you want to edit this example for your own purposes. We send the request. It's been it's been sent and we received a response. If we hover here, we can see that the response is a big daunting JSON. But luckily we're in JavaScript, so we're going to parse it. And we see here we receive the title of the channel Android Dev 101 and we receive the stats. Now, the YouTube callback here is non-existent because that's initialized from our Java code. So you see that there's no reference. It doesn't understand it in Chrome. But you can debug up to this point and then know that this will be sent back to our Java. So let's run that now in our simulator and see how that works. And it's previously installed, so it just brought it to the front. Here is our main layout. Let's try again Android Dev 101. And now when we click search, we see the loading text. Once it's done loading, it disappears, and we see the channel statistics displayed. Now, we can even check if we enter a channel that probably doesn't exist, because I just smashed the keyboard for a few seconds and created a long nonsensical string. Give that a second for the emulator to catch up. We'll click search, and we see it gave an error because the YouTube API returned back an error. And it's really that easy. You can reuse code that's been previously used in other web applications in your Android application for performing these queries. Thank you again for joining us for another webisode of Android Dev 101, taking a further look into the WebView class in Android.